Welcome to the Ogles channel. Thanks for watching today. And let's talk about the Cowbone Collection at least one more time for the release date, which is going to be August 30th. Because we had the San Diego Comic Con this past weekend, and there was a ton of information released about the game ahead of time. A lot of people got to have hands on on the game and really experience it. And a lot of interviews were given as well of some of the features that are included in the game. Now, the trailers already told us about, like, you know, the save, the rewind feature, sort of the museum feature, but there really wasn't. Um, as many details as many players would like. And at the San Diego Comic Con, they really got to dive deep into some of these details. And uh, a website called GoNintendo.com really broke down everything that was revealed at the Comic Con. They really pulled in from about two or three different interview sources here and some hands-on interactions with different uh, people who were there. But let's take a look at some of the things that were described. First off, they said there's an interactive strategy guide for every game. Now I watched some video footage of this and it's really, uh, they compared it a lot to Nintendo Power um, here and they said it's almost like you're reading your own version of Nintendo power for these interactive strategy guides And it tells you tips about like how to beat this boss or where to go in this level or should you take this jump? You know, especially like in turtles one and then in some of the later ones like some rules as far as like um, Co-op and such goes like who gets the pizza in certain circumstances of who has the most health if you're tied for health You know some fun things in there as well But basically try to help you work through these games and I actually made a point of saying with these guys, it might be the first time anyone's ever beaten Turtles 1, or not anyone, but the vast majority of players have beaten Turtles 1. Go Nintendo also mentioned it's going to remove the sprite flicker and slowdown on the NES, and this was something that we've talked about a little bit on the channel before, but according to the videos I watched, this is definitely an option, so you can have it removed, you can keep it on there exactly as you want it, it's completely up to the player on exactly how you want to play the game, which is awesome they also mentioned a level select and the level select from the videos that i watched it didn't really say for the very first turtles game it seemed like they were talking more for like the arcade games or you know the arcade style fighter games when it came to the level select which is pretty cool they also mentioned in some of the video footage as far as like the cheat code you would enter in you can just simply select those from the menus itself which is sort of a neat feature for the arcade games as well. There's also a CPU takeover feature, which means you can have a tool assisted uh, speed run through the game and you can simply take over from where the computer was playing and continue the game from there. They did make a point of saying that you can't uh, keep going back and forth. Like you can't like let the computer play for a while, then you play for a while and then the computer take back over. It's gonna be more of the computer takes over and plays for a while and then you can jump in, but you can't just simply um, swap back and forth. But still, this is pretty cool, especially for like the first Turtles game, because um, a lot of players want to see how the game is played, you know, how to get through certain bosses, but you know, it's a little bit harder, and the tool assisted speedrun can really show players exactly what to do. At the Comic Con, they also talked about the museum, which they said here includes design document manuals, brochures, music, etc., includes pop up translation. They actually mentioned in the video that I watched about this, there are over hundreds and hundreds of pages of these documents showing the design of the game, the concepts, and such as that. I know IGN here recently released like 11 pages, which were all sort of cool looking. If you go to IGN's website, you can see them on there. And I'll show a few of them on the screen here. But you can see 11 of the preview pages of what they're gonna be doing. But in the museum, it has hundreds of pages, which is awesome for us Turtles fans when it comes to that. And also, on the screenshots here, it doesn't show it, but they're gonna have pop-up translation blocks. So you can actually read all of these in English and really see what the developers are thinking when they actually created these games. Go Nintendo also mentioned the museum above is a recreation of the 80s cartoon turtle layer, which definitely looks just like that. They said they look, worked with Nickelodeon a lot to make sure they got all the angles and such correct, which is pretty cool. Also stylized game menu, which is, uses original comic art. We've talked about that in the past. And they also said when you're in the menu, you can swap back and forth between the um, Japanese version of the game and the English version of the game and the artwork and such will change based upon the region as well which I think is pretty cool to see all this alternate artwork. They also mentioned there's a boss select and a tournament fighter. So this is not just simply selecting which boss you want to fight, which some players might think. This is actually getting to play as the bosses. And this was a feature in some of the tournament fighters. However, in the uh, Sega one in particular, this is the first time it's ever been added into the game. So they're actually modifying the games to give us more features, which I never envisioned them doing, but that's awesome that they're taking the time to actually give us more in the game. And speaking of Sega, Hyperstone Heist was the only one that actually had a dash button, and we actually get to map a dash button as a separate button on the other beat-em-ups. And so, that's pretty cool. There's also what's called a nightmare mode, tons of enemies from the arcade games. I didn't see any gameplay of this in any of the footage that I watched, but um, that's a pretty exciting little fun mini game to include inside the overall collection. 
Also, various screen boards, which we talked about in the past videos, which screen board we're going to use. And it seems like you're going to get to choose multiple different ones, as well as different filter options as well. This is something that's in a lot of retro collections. You want to play like it looks like on an old CRTV. Do you want pixel perfect? And it it's, was assumed that was probably included in the uh, Cowboy collection as well. Overall, this gives us a ton of information about the game. And I can't imagine any more leaks really coming out before the game itself. Because it's only like, it's like a month away and the game is coming out. And so i say this is probably going to be the... Um, last leak of information last video about as far as new features in the game and i cannot wait to get my hands on a cowbone collection and actually go through and explore some of these museum features some of these artwork and you know just play through the old games again i mean i love the old turtles games and getting to play through them man it's gonna be amazing if you enjoyed this video be sure to like and subscribe to the channel check out my other turtles videos listed up above and as always go out there find a great game to play just simply have a great rest of the day